in mind. Uh, I'm going to introduce you now to Jorge Arevalo. As I was saying, uh, Jorge Arevalo is Deputy Regional Minister uh, for Education in the Basque Country. And uh, he knows very, very well that uh, building the future on the basis of what we have here and now is the key to success. How can we train and create knowledge, generate knowledge that will give us a better future? Well, a good part of that uh, is education and training. Explaining how to do it uh, will probably be a challenge to uh, Jorge Arevalo, the floor is all yours. I've really enjoyed Alex's presentation. I wanted to start uh, with that. I've read uh, many of his books, and he's got fantastic quotes. I love uh, one of them that came to mind when I was listening to you uh, by John Lennon, who said, life is something that happens as we are planning something else. And having heard Alex talk a number of times and read his books. I think Alex very much makes us focus on life. I'm here to tell you about cybersecurity. So let's talk about real cybersecurity because I know our, uh, at the provincial government or us at the regional Basque government, we know that we have clear evidence uh, that uh, this is a serious threat and we should do something about it. And I totally agree with what Alex said uh, about Spain. And uh, here in the Basque country, we're even smaller. But uh, we're doing our utmost uh, to uh, be ready. And I was also thinking about uh, a graffiti that I saw on a wall in Buenos Aires, uh, saying, I'm fed up with truths. I want more promises. These are the truths, right? Uh, there, there can be so many different promises, and yet uh, public institutions and governments uh, need to face the truth. That's what we're doing here today and tomorrow in the field of cybersecurity. I'm here to tell you about how we want to face the challenge of cybersecurity and other issues as well in the field of vocational training. Alex also talks about prevention, seeing where we need uh, to head for so we can preempt future needs, even though we can't really imagine the future because we still have to build it. Uh, but as long as we do things right, then outcomes uh, can be great. So let's do it. Let's do it right. Our vision of the future, thinking about cybersecurity, it looks so complex that uh, if you talk to a youngster or a teacher or parents, uh, if you talk about cybersecurity, what do they know about it? Well, uh, they think of um, the news, they think of attacks. Uh, multiple screens with very young hackers, normally coming from Eastern Europe, China, or some anti-system hackers from the US. That's the paradigm, right? And uh, these youngsters attacking banks, companies, governments with a terrible virus uh, or extracting uh, very, very secret or very valuable information. That would be the general knowledge of normal people in the street uh, about cybersecurity. But they forget about something that's basic, is data. Data, uh, that's what we need to look after. Uh, that's our strategic asset we need to care for. And if we're good at that, if we can be keep our data safe, then we can sit back and relax pretty much so. We talk about digitization, about the cloud, big data, millions and billions of uh, pieces of information that uh, fall within lots of different types of technologies within this context the Internet of Things, IoT. What is that? 
When we talk about IoT, uh, we mean that uh, many different things in our daily lives are, or even more so, will be interconnected. So, the, con uh, the uh, data interconnectivity, the Internet of Things, is uh, the subject that normal people in the street are not so aware of. They think, oh, well, banks or governments or companies, um, I bet they're good at keeping information safe. Well, uh, people don't realize that in our daily lives, uh, we are using and will be using so many different connected devices and pieces of equipment. For instance, uh, cars or cars that will be repaired remotely uh, and that will be interconnected with other cars, accessing information and sending information for other drivers on all sorts of topics. As soon as uh, you get into your car, uh, your car will, my car will tell me about my mood and depending on my mood, uh, it, it will play different types of music. And we think, wow, uh, that's really amazing. Oh, it's not. It's, it's, it exists. So, normal people should understand that transport, energy, waste, banking, uh, in so many different areas of our daily lives, we're already interconnected. And let's talk about now about homes and households looking after people with disabilities or people uh, who before of their old age, uh, they have mobility problems and just with a wink of an eye or by blinking might uh, lower or raise the shutters uh, at home uh, or somebody, uh, somebody who has tr uh, uh, tetraplegia. It's amazing, even the color of our walls uh, will change, or can change, in fact, now. So that is the context. That's the new uh, concept of the Internet of Things. So uh, this is going to change our lives. This IoT has helped us to develop this new project and many others we are now devising. The importance of sensorics. This is one of, uh, of our fundamental uh, elements. Be, uh, sometimes they're now used in 16 computers. We use a car. You have to take care of uh, radars. You're OK. But the car has in, um, 16 computers working at the same time on inside the car. This is good to improve um, all the um, actions to be made uh, in the car, if uh, there's going to be an accident, uh, the uh, um, assisted parking and everything. When we talk about cybersecurity and the industry sector, which is very important, we have to think about global cybersecurity of all things that surround us in our leisure, in our daily lives, in our work, in our companies. And there's another basic element security. We speak about cyber security, but we mean security in general. In our security in our daily lives has to be clear to us from the beginning. Because there's so, many, so much technology around us and everything is, so, is connected. For instance, your clothes, you, uh, your uh, sneakers can be connected to the internet. And everything will be connected to this other world. We don't really know where the cloud is. It's going to give us well-being, but we can have also problems with it. Se security is very complex to understand. It's still something that can be uh, destroyed, but it's complex. And that complexity helped us to work in different environments in order to find a different training for people. In uh, vocational training, we don't have the typical uh, training in the class. It's a different learning process with different contexts. It's about learning to be people. And youngsters will need four important elements 
F first, the scientific, cultural uh, part in their learning so that we can face up to the future, a professional component which has to be clearly defined to work with it, another component which is high qualifications and specialization for cyber security, for example, and the fourth component, values. Values f we uh, described as four dot uh, zero. So it's very, very different, and uh, values do evolve a lot. So uh, vocational training has worked on three different typo typ typical skills, uh, adaptation capacity, reaction capacity, and anticipation capacity. These this two first skills we are quite good, adaptation and reaction. We give good uh, answers to our companies, but we need to work on anticipation more. That context that we transfer to people n uh, requires new skills. For instance, we need to manage complexity. Complexity management, we need then six elements to be developed. And today, we are already including training cycles in vocational training. We have different cycles, it's uh, high performance cycles, more than 5,000 500 students uh, do following this type of um, uh, teaching and learning cycles. The new skills, they need to have these new skills to understand what they are living now and what they, we, they're going to find in their future with this complex technology to adapt to complexities. So people need to acquire new skills or these other skills this is, has been included in uh, vocational training. It's about ability, about capacity and competence. Vocational training, and this is such just examples. For instance, robotic, additive management, 3D printing, we are working in industry, health and gastronomy, we are working on uh, robotic, additive uh, management, uh, virtual reality, augmented reality virtual reality and the mixed reality, which is the result of fusion. And the Internet of Things, we, the new materials, in this case, we're still not working with graphene and fiber, uh, carbon fiber. We're, we are making a lot of, uh, making progress in drones, in um, uh, smart w warehouses, and smart shops. We have to help SMEs and micro SMEs to install their own uh, warehouses and workshops with uh, digitization so that they can work in this uh, uh, new environment for industries, even though they're small uh, companies and workshops. And for uh, smart warehouses, we have this already in our vocational training courses. We have 2,000 new tools that are connected. So you, you know who's the person who has a tool and it's, being, it's connected, so we know where the tool is and who's using it. This is used to Im improve our training centers, to improve teaching and learning, and to help SMEs, basically. In this context, we're now de designing a new plan. It's a new uh, Basque Center for Future Learnings. This center will analyze uh, what is coming up in instead of preparing our vocational training uh, system with anticipation. We're now pre getting ready. We will have an observatory and we'll have perspective. And then we will, uh, in advance, prepare the subject matters and the uh, the skills and uh, the learning that uh, these youngsters will need in, in several years' time. So, anticipation. And then uh, we included specialization programs. In 2016, the provincial government in Gipuzkoa and the uh, um, Department of Innovation, with a great team, uh, told us that they had contacts with companies and, and they realized that cybersecurity was fundamental and vocational training should include cybersecurity and we were pleased to work with them. So we co cooperated on many projects and we started to work together because we had n never thought about cybersecurity in vocational training. 
So in the titles that come from the Ministry of Education that uh, sets up the education subject matters for the whole of the state, I mean, it, this didn't include cybersecurity in the Basque government. We decided to create specialization programs. These are a la carte uh, programs, so uh, customized programs for our students in cybersecurity. Well, together with the provincial government and with uh, com companies around us, we had to define and prioritize uh, needs for cybersecurity in our uh, different sectors. So we defined a specialized program, and now we have students that are now finishing the training cycle, and they're now specialists on cybersecurity, and we're going to continue in the next few years to work on this. Very quickly, th there's an introduction to cybersecurity, uh, the uh, safe codes, programming, perimeter security, forensic analysis, how uh, intruders have come in our, into our computers, security in industrial systems, and the, the importance of that, especially on advanced uh, manufacturing. And when we talk about penetration, the uh, penetration testing, pen testing, how these people can penetrate our systems with um, vulnerability assessments, web audits, management, and security governance. This is the specialization program for our students because these students have already done two IT courses and now there's a third course, a third year with this specialization prog uh, program. Uh, this is the curriculum for uh, cybersecurity. So they will have a specialization qualification for cybersecurity, so a three-year plan. We started with these companies, with the uh, provincial government and its department for innovation with uh, uh, S21SEC, that's the one uh, of the companies we've worked with, because we have to, a lot to learn. We need to learn from these firms so that we can have knowledge being transferred to our teachers and then to our students. We've had um, uh, partnerships with uh, several companies, so it's been a great effort uh, given by the businesses. I think we'll improving in the next few years. We'll have very good professionals in cybersecurity. We have three companies that are interested by these plans in Gipuzkoa and also in our region, we are working with these other companies to develop this new context, the specialization program in cybersecurity in the Basque Country because it is capital and in our daily lives. And vocational training has a key role to play here. Alex said it with different words, but at the end of the day, everything is collaborative work. We've uh, worked with the uh, provincial government, and we also collaborate with the government uh, itself, because there I have uh, I'm leading now the vice ministry of vocational training, but I've been in touch with many other ministries at regional level. We work together because we need collaboration. To, need, to know what are other, other people's needs. So we all learn together and we have common goals. We work with the Basque Center for Cybersecurity. We are also working with them in other territories and especially in international networks. So it's a way of developing and identifying needs in order to develop the adapted uh, responses. And the final goal is security. And the most important part here is uh, training teachers. I was saying that we are learning a lot and we have so much to learn still. And we have to be close to the companies because they're there, they're fighting. They need to be the best and we don't want them to be attacked. We don't want them to have production problems. So we, we have to be in touch with technicians, with specialists so that they can work in these companies and they will uh, add value to those companies because they can uh, ensure security. But it's important to have good teachers. Our teachers are, are committed, are greatly involved, and I'd like to thank them for that. They are very enthusiastic in their work. And they are deeply committed. So we need to train them, especially in IT, in cybersecurity. They have to uh, give good teaching good tuition, and we're now pre training teachers, especially in manufacturing or in sensorics, so that 
uh, are students, uh, those who don't study uh, cybersecurity, but those who do uh, manufacturing processes uh, or those who works in, work in robotics, they need to know also uh, what are the basic concepts in, in cybersecurity because they will have to include it in their daily practice. So we need to teach our teachers about the importance of cybersecurity. These people work with uh, advanced machines making very complex parts and components, but need to, they need to understand that this machine could be attacked from the outside. It could be a disaster, so ne they need to be aware about uh, cybersecurity in their machines in manufacturing. So training is not only aimed at teachers for this specialization program, it's for teachers who uh, deal with other areas of uh, education. This, this can be uh, affecting our economy in depth. Thank you very much for your attention. I think I, I've been punctual. Thank you.